Hello there YouTube, this is Necro Steve and it's time for our week 6, season 7, team builder for the GBA. Uh, this week we'll be going up against the Milwaukee Sauce Bucks, who are coached by Battler X, the one and only. Uh, so if you need his information, it will be in the description. And if you should perchance not want to watch the team builder, I never take too long on these, but I'll leave something for you to skip right to the battle. Now, preparing for this matchup was very interesting. There were some things that I was able to immediately eliminate somewhat. Uh, for example, his um, Licky Licky, or to a slightly lesser extent, I'd say, the, um, the Swampert. I didn't see him bringing those. Not only do I have really good super effective options against both, just in Broilium alone, but um, with their lower speed tiers, and just my ability to take advantage of their presence on the field and have things set up, I figured he wouldn't really be bringing those. Now that being said, his other options such as Cresselia and Cartana and Zerkatree and Mimikyu are all massive threats, with other things like Zoroark and Lycanroc being relatively unpredictable in how he might use them, but those can be pretty big threats too if he decides to bring them. I am especially worried about the presence of Cresselia and Mimikyu because neither of those is going to go down to a single hit for the most part, barring maybe my bandit's crafty here. Uh, but with either one of those, I want to be able to um, to hit them very hard and get rid of them as quickly as I can. Uh, Zerkatree is his Z captain, and with that, he gets access to Z Bloom Doom, which can blow away Hippowdon. Um, he can set up Z Electric Terrain or even Hypnosis and puts them into sleep and gets faster. Um, he even gets like weird things like Z Signal Beam, Z Dazzling Gleam, so I don't want to deal with any of those if I don't have to. So, how are we going to deal with this? Well, we have two relatively um, dedicated leads. I don't know why I have. I jump cut twice here, but that is what it should be. But, anyways though, we have two relatively dedicated leads depending on what he brings. And I'm going to leave his team on the screen there just so you guys can make sure you see it. But uh, if he does not bring Zoroark, then I will always lead Scrafty. And I will, depending, he will probably bring Mimikyu. I see Mimikyu coming. But even if he leaves Mimikyu, I just get to click Banded Knockoff against anything that he might lead with. The only things I'm worried about there are, like an off, if he leaves Offensive Starmie, expecting me to try to get a Might Rocks or something like that, and then I have to worry about Dazzling Gleam. That is the only situation in which I don't click Bandit Knockoff. If he brings Zoroark, then we lead with Swallow, and we go with U-Turn instead. Um, with the choice ban, Scrafty can even two-hit KO Cresselia with High Jump Kick. So just to give you an idea of the power there. I only have enough speed to outspeed uh, like a normal Cresselia, like a Cresselia without any speed investment. But even if he's packing Moonblast on Cresselia, it can't one hit. It cannot one hit KO my Scrafty. Um, you see there, I just want to high jump, kick, knock off, crunch, drain punch because look at his team and then tell me what of those two moves, just fighting in dark, does that not hit? And there you have your answer as far as why I brought those moves because it's great neutral coverage against his team. Now, granted, I do have to be careful with Scrafty. His speed is still relatively low. Um, even with Steve's team, is probably a little bit uh, above average in speed slightly. But I'm faster than most of his stuff. Like, I can outspeed the Hariyama, the Licky Licky, the, um, the Swampert, and the Cresselia. So that's about half his Pokemon, so Grappy should do well here. On Swallow, it's going to be the Gut Set again, and we have Facade, U-Turn, Steel Wing, and Brave Bird. Steel Wing is just there in case I think Lycan Rock is going to come in to play. Uh, it also gives me um, a recoil less move to use against Mimikyu. I don't like using Steel Wing because it's relatively weak, but the power is nice. Apparently when I talk about Swallow I get to hear sirens, so sound the alarm because this flame orb is on fire for some other reason, I guess. Now um, there's just enough speed there to outspeed the Starmie. The rest is in HP just because of, number one, I hit a nice Stealth Rock number, Number two, if he happens to have Sucker Punch Zoroark with extra HP, I have a better chance of living a Sucker Punch. He shouldn't be able to KO me if he's like a mixed Zoroark with Life Orb. At most, that'll do 84% to my Swallow. Um, the next Pokemon that we have on the team here 
is going to be the um, Hippowdon, which I did bring with a berry this week, Rindo Berry actually, which makes Grass Moose less effective one time. Uh, with the investment I have on Special Defense and Max HP, I can always live a Z Bloom Doom from a Max Special Attack Modest Zerkatry. So that is very nice. Um, with that little bit of defensive investment and in going Impish, even if he brings Bandits, Lycanroc, uh, he has Lycanroc Day form. Um, Bandit Lycanroc with Ice Fang, that can't two hit KO the Sepaldon. Um, I have seen Battlerex before bring uh, Sand Rush Lycanroc because of his opponent's prevalence in bringing Sand. And Sand doesn't really help too much here. There's not, like, the things that it would whittle away at are things that I would kind of hit really hard anyway. Um, the things that it wouldn't whittle away at, Cartana and Swamper and the Lycanroc, I have other ways to hit those, so might as well not give him a really, really fast sweeper with a possible choice band or if he sets up rocks or something like that. And then with Sand Force, I don't have to worry about damaging my own Pokemon with my Sandstorm either. Um, I just threw the rest into attack there because it helps with if I live a hit from Hariyama, if I live a hit from the Kartana even, I can hit them back just a little bit harder. Uh, I really want to put his team in range of my Breloom or in range of the um, Swellow because I outspeed his whole team with those two for the most part and that really makes things a lot more easy for my team. Up next we have Klefki again, and even though I haven't used Klefki in the draft format before, I'm really enjoying using Klefki. This Pokemon is going to be my stop to if he decides to go really cheeky with like a Specs Komodo or something like that, Klefki can handle it somewhat. Uh, here it has a Citrus Berry, actually I'm going to end up bringing Light Clay, because I did change that in my notes, but I forgot to change it here. Um, but yeah. So with Klefki, not only is he there as a good general pivot, uh, if certain Pokemon on his team lack certain coverage moves, such as him not having a Fire-type move on Komo'o or uh, Zoroark, or Zerkatree not having, um, you know, having Z-Bloom Doom and having Burned It doesn't really have a stronger way to hit Klefki, I can at least come in and make things a little bit easier for my other teammates. Um, Reflect is really nice here in case he tries to go Belly Drum Komo'o or uh, maybe sets up a Swords Dance with Mimikyu. Um, and then Spikes are just there because his only great way of removal is the Starmie. So why not force that thing to waste a turn by spinning eventually at some point. Now, um, with Braylon you can see I've gone Choice Scarfed. My plan is to click uh, once the Cresselia is gone at least, my plan is to click Force Palm the majority of the time during this battle. We have just enough speed there for um, like a, a very very offensive Cresselia, uh, the rest in just HP. The Bullet Seed is nice too to eliminate Swampert from the battle immediately. And I also just went ahead and went Scarf Mock Punch because of if he happens to be a Scarf like Rock or if he sets up his own sand or something weird like that. I can hit him before he hits me. I guess not if he sets up a sand, but if he sets up a sand, he probably won't have a slow rock. But it also, if he um, happens to get like plus one speed with Zerkatry, I can at least mock punch it there too. Or actually, I'd be faster and I can just force palm it. Um, up against Starmie, if he's not Scar Starmie, I can outspeed him and I can take him out with a bullet seed. So, um, just a few general options there that I really like. I put Spore on there, I don't expect to be clicking Spore in this battle. The only time I would click that is if hmm, the Kartana would have to already be KO'd for me to click Spore, because I'm afraid of him trying to swap in on a grass type move and get a free setup. Um, now my last Pokemon, Manaphy, finally bringing it, it has taken two weeks for me to bring Manaphy. Uh, but you see here we just have Surf, Energy Ball, Tail Glow, and Rain Dance. Just enough speed there. Um, wow, I am blinking on why I have that speed here. You'll have to excuse me because I just got off work and I left my work, my notes at work. So there we have it, preparation as its finest. But um, I believe that's enough speed for the for like uh, 
a non-speed nature Zoroark or maybe um, something like that. But the point is, oh, excuse me, I remember what this is for. It has that HP investment so that it can lift two life or play roughs from a Jolly Mimikyu. That way I can always set up on either Mimikyu or Cresselia. But the purpose of the set is to come in on Cresselia that can't really touch mana feet and set up a Tail Glow and a Rain Dance because once those two things are up, his whole team falls to mana feet. Um, I just went Surf and Energy Ball because that gives the best overall damage output. I could have gone Surf and Ice Beam in case of Komo'o, but because of my Clef Key and also my Swellow, I'm less worried about the Komo'o. So we're going to focus on being able to make sure we take care of this Darmy and then just hitting as many other things on this team as we can with Surf. So that's the general game plan. I'm expecting him to bring Cresselia. So if I can start off with one of my two dedicated leads there and either hit something really hard that might come in later and knock off a bunch of his HP, or at the very least you turn out and then then go into uh, my uh, mana fee on the Cresselia, then we are kind of getting into the game plan that I have for this match. I'm definitely going to have to scout a lot for the Komo'o set. If we bring Swampert, I'll kind of expect him to lead it off with rocks. Um, so yeah, just a few things to, to keep in mind there. And thanks so much for taking a moment to watch my team builder. So we'll get on to the battle now. Thanks guys. Alrighty, so thank you guys so much for taking a moment to watch my team builder. If you didn't watch it, quick rundown of the team is Choice Bandits Grafty. Uh, Tail Glow, Rain Dance, Water EMZ, Manaphy, Gut Swallow, uh, a nice Scarf Breloom, um, Hippowdon has a Rindo Berry, and of course, Specially Defensive Klefki with Screen. So, he actually didn't bring what I thought he would bring. It was a huge sigh of relief to not see the Zoroark, and to a lesser extent, to not see um, things like Hariyama that can kind of push through some of my Pokemon. Uh, with the Pokemon that he had, I knew if I could get some, injury, get some injury hazards up and stick to my plan of just whittling things down with Breloom and Swellow, this should be a very straightforward, very offensive game. Um, so I decided to start with Scrafty because, like I said, he didn't bring Zoroark. He starts off with Zerkatry. Uh, I have a very good chance of lifting any hit from it, but uh, Zerkatry also can, can go straight for the Z move and knock out my Scrafty. So um, if he tries to go straight for a Z, Electrium Z move, we go out into our on here and he actually goes for Dazzling Gleam, which is really good coverage to know because he would have outsped my Scrafty too. Uh, and so since the Dazzling Gleam came in, Hippowdon actually took that pretty well for me being my kind of weird mixed defensive spread. Um, and I need Scout here to see if he had Energy Ball, so that's why I double switched into Klefki. And he did have the Energy Ball, which means we need to put up Light Screen because um, now if he's gonna go for his Thunderbolt, Electrium Z boosted, Gigabolt Havoc thing, he's gonna do it now. And the best chance of living that is to put up a light screen. So he ends up going for that without using his Z move and that means that I have an opportunity to set up some spikes. I wanted to go ahead and get those up because that would force Starmie to waste a spin, uh, well not really waste a spin, but waste a turn rapid spinning. And that would give me a free opportunity to take advantage of it. I was really hoping he would rapid spin here because spikes hit every member of his team. He goes straight for Scald as I try to be really, really aggressive and bring in Breloom. Very fortunately, I don't get burned. I um, I am Scarf though, and here is where he finds that out as I outspeed his Starmie. Uh, he could have been a Scarf Starmie, but since he locked himself into Scald, I wasn't too worried about it. And then nothing on his team wants to take repeated hits from Bullet Seed except for Kartana, and even then we're switching it on Spikes. Uh, he does bring in Komo'o here, now that he knows that I'm Scarfed, and I know that he's bulletproof. Um, I did not have time to breed Whirlwind onto my Hippowdon, so I had to put Roar on there. And Whirlwind would have been superior here, but if he had, had Soundproof, then of course Bullet Seed and, and Focus Blast and stuff would hit the Komo'o. So he ends up doubling out into his Zerkatry as I bring in my Clef Key. Um, and that was kind of unfortunate because I didn't know what moveset his Komo'o had. I was, af I was afraid that it was Scarfed as well which is why he might have gone into it knowing that my Breloom was Scarfed. And right here I figured I could take any hits and get up Reflect, 
because since I don't know what Kamo'o or Meloetta do, Reflect will help with Kartana and Mimikyu. So Kamo'o could be special or physical, and Meloetta normally are special, but it could also be running this, the physical set. So uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to take that secondary Thunderbolt. I had a chance to live it, um, a pretty good chance. He got a little bit of a high roll, which is okay. Um, knowing that he's not Scarf, though, I can go out to my Swallow and click U-Turn. I could have gone for Brave Bird or Facade, but in case he swapped out, which is what I expected him to do, U-Turn uh, was my best play. And if he stayed in, then I would be forced to go ahead and sacrifice my Hippowdon. Um, you might notice as well that my Hippowdon doesn't have the Sand Force, and that's just because he had Lycanroc. Um, I'm sorry, he has Sand Force, and that was because Lycanroc has... Um, the uh, Sand Rush ability, so I didn't want to give that to him, so this is a, a Sand Force to pout on. But he has a Red Force, Red Card Mimikyu, and that forces me out to hit pout on. So that actually worked out very well, because not only do I break his Disguise, but I know he's going to swap, and so that allows me to go for Roar to get extra Entry Hazard damage on his Pokemon. It forces him out into his Kartana, and with my Rindo Berry, I can take any one hit from Kartana. Um, and he actually goes for a Smart Strike, expecting me to swap out. And I use this opportunity to show off all that attack investment I put on my Hippowdon and do a fantastic amount of damage to Kartana, despite its great uh, defensive stat. Now here, I definitely would have lived Leaf Blade from that amount of HP. It would have only done around 40% max, but he gets a critical hit, so I'm, I go down there without being able to get at my Stealth Rock. Because I did click Stealth Rock there just because I wanted extra damage on um, Kamo'o. Uh, but since I went down in that fashion, it's time for this Swallow Train to begin. Because um, he doesn't have anything that can switch in on Swallow's moves besides the Mimikyu. And Mimikyu can only switch in if I go for Facade. So if I go straight for Brave Bird, which would have easily KO'd the Kartana from that range, then that's good game for the Mimikyu. Now with Mimikyu out of the way, I can easily lock my Breloom into, um, I can lock my Scrafty, excuse me, into High Jump Kick very very easily now I don't have to worry about missing and crashing and messing up his knee or anything like that so um, here knowing that the Meloetta is coming back I still don't know if he's gonna try to set up he could try to go for Relic Song and switch moves uh, switch forms and he'd be faster than a lot of my Pokemon um, so the Intimidate would handle that and then if he's not gonna try to switch forms then Scrafty is very especially bulky I also could have gone into uh, my uh, Manaphy here but Meloetta can carry Thunderbolt as coverage, and so I wanted to at least see what his coverage options were. Um, and since he swapped out of there, I'm starting to think that he's a more bulky, um, maybe defensive type of Meloetta. And um, I just go straight for Abandoned Knockoff, which is able to clean up the Kartana. So that actually works out very, very well. Uh, with Kamo coming back in, I don't know what it's going to do so I don't have a great swap into it because it's like I don't know what move is going to go for and he hits Scrafty and knocks him out from that range with one clanging scales and the alarm bells for that being a Specs Kamo'o are ringing in my head so we're going to go out into Manaphy here he doesn't know that I don't have Ice Beam uh, but I also was like okay on the off chance that he was scarfed I need to just get some damage off to put him in range of a Mach Punch from my Breloom uh, so I just wanted to cover all my bases there. I could have gone for Tail Glow right here. That also would have been, a, I think that would have been a much better play. But if he were Scarfed, then Tail Glow would be bad because I wouldn't have put the damage on him to get him in range for my priority moves. So um, he actually lives the Hydro Vortex, and I was like, okay, this is fine because now I can just finish him off with another Surf. Uh, and Surf actually doesn't do enough damage, <laughs> at least it with just a sliver of HP which is annoying. How often do you see Manaphy get taken down by a Kamo'o? Especially after I use the Z-move. It's like, oh man, I should have just clicked the Tail Glow. But that was more of the, the very safe way to, to manage that situation. But he has four Pokemon left. I have a Swallow that outspeeds all four of his Pokemon. So Kamo'o is gonna go down here. I just went for a quick attack, just on, again, the off, off, off chance that he is Scarfed. Plus, since I know none of his remaining Pokemon are Scarfed, if he swaps something in on the quick attack, Kamo'o would die on the switch in, and then I could just follow up with another attack here. Um, this Meloetta is actually, I think it's max HP, max defense. And so even after the layers of spikes, 
Uh, that was a roll to KO, swell, uh, to KO the Meloetta. I think it was a roll in my favor, but it was a roll nonetheless. So I don't feel so bad about that crit um, through the, the Reflect and my Rindo Berry on my Hippowdon earlier for sure. Uh, once again, Zergo Tree isn't Scarfed, so he's going to go down to a Facade. And then that is going to be good game. So thank you very much for the battle, Battler X. And that's going to bring us a victory over the Milwaukee Sawsbucks. Uh, the score on this battle really doesn't say the, the whole story here just because that was such an intense, fast-paced battle. Um, very offensive the entire time. It was, an, it was a huge honor for me to get to battle Steve because I have not... I've been following his channel since like 2010. So finally getting an opportunity to, um, to battle him after being sub to him for all this long. That's, that's awesome for me. So thank you very much for the battle. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching. So now we're back on the board with the victory. I hope you, um, for this battle, I would say that the MVP was definitely Swellow, picking up four KOs and outspeeding his entire team for the most part. Uh, the, I think a really critical play that allowed Swellow to do that though, was um, Breloon knocking out the Starmie, which allowed the entry hazards to stay on the field, of course. Uh, without that, any type of sashes he had. Um, also, Swallow using U-Turn to break Mimikyu's disguise so that he could KO it later. That was perfect, because uh, I could have very easily gone for uh, Facade or Quick Attack or anything like that in that turn, and then Mimikyu would have been able to swap in for free. So. Good job, Swallow. We're going to make sure you are looking nice and valuable by the end of the season. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you have any comments, be sure to leave those below. I will definitely be responding to them, and I will talk to you guys later. Goodbye.